What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Bundesliga career mode. It is episode number 34. We're saying today on the back of our win over Freiburg right now. Heading into the winter break. Uh, top of the table. Seven clear of RB Leipzig and Bayern Munich as well. And I'm not going to talk about the defensive record yet. But yes, that is definitely in the back of our minds right now. I've never done that before. Uh, today, uh, yeah, the January window is going to open. Uh, we'll have more big games in Bundesliga aimed to stay top of the table right now. So we'll play through the entirety of the January transfer window. Seven mil in the budget. So unless we make a sale or two, we're probably not going to sign anyone. So we'll probably get through January quite quickly. Uh, and in February, we'll have some other big Bundesliga games. I might squeeze in that first leg away at the San Siro against AC Milan. I'll see if I've got the time. We'll definitely play the D. FP Pokal quarterfinal at home to Borussia Mönchengladbach aim to reach the semis for the third year in a row. So there's loads to get through today. We're getting straight to it. And right off the bat with the January window opening, this is an interesting one. Athletic Bilbao uh, putting in a bid for Bissek, who of course left us to join Inter Milan before we were here. Uh, but since bringing him back, he's, he's got his first goal since returning this season and 84 overall, 27. Not sure what his ceiling is now, but no, with him being homegrown as well. I always say that if a player is homegrown, that just gives them an extra reason to stay. Especially one of my teams, man. You know how important that is to me for that European squad registration ruling. Uh, but right now, look at the academy. We haven't really shown this this season because we're now uh, five seasons in. And I'm not sure anyone's going to make it from this point onwards. But there's still a couple of really decent players down here. And of course, for those that are curious, no, I haven't released him yet. How can I release him? How can I release this guy? To be fair, if I did, he'd get signed by a model agency, let alone another football team. But <laughs> this dude, man. This must be the lowest potential player I've ever kept in my academy for this long of a time. It's lookism. That's what it is. It's Ua Drago. It's, oh, wow. Arsenal put him in for Derek. Now, he did have a bid for Man City a couple of months ago. But of course, he turned it down. Now, in terms of selling my starters this year, uh, in this, uh, this window, I should say, they're all off limits. They're, they're all completely off limits. I know we signed Alfonso Davis, but Derek is still starting left back with Davis now starting right mid. So all of my starters, I'm actually going to block the offers. All of my starters are off limits in January. In the summer, I would consider bids for a couple of them, including Derek. But right now, it's a no. All of my stars are off limits. And driver does look as though he's off to Spain, which is a shame because I really wanted him. But that serves me right for not pulling the plug. You had five seasons, Doxy boy. It's your fault for not getting him. And there's a big there for uh, Burko. who struggled with goals this season. <laughs> And this is an interesting one. Almeria, former team of ours, putting in a bid in. A swap deal including Lucas Robertoni, who I thought was going to be the hero of that save, uh, which I did earlier this year. Uh, he was so good for me in the first season, but we're going to turn it down. Burkhardt might have struggled in front of goal this season, but he's topping assists right now. So also, I'll block offers with him too. None of my starters are in the shot window right now. Right, first game, newly promoted Hanover 96 at home. Should be a bank with Den down the bottom of the table with Bayern and Leipzig putting the pressure back on with wins yesterday. The gap now cut to four. We need to win ourselves to re-extend it back to seven. Should be a comfortable win here though. Let's make sure it is. Come on, Carl. So, you know, Maxime until late February on the back of the injury against Freiburg. So that's a big miss there. And that was almost a, uh, a big opening goal for Hanover. That is, that is a big blow there because he's been so good for us this year. Obviously, Leandro is still down, lest we forget. He got to a red star, a red dot star himself until the injury too. So we're missing two of our most important pieces right now until around late February time. Big, big blows. And hopefully they'll both come back in time for that uh, first leg against AC Milan, but for sure until then they will be missing. But that means other players have got to step up. And to be fair, this player has stepped up, man. I love this. We said last season, it was a roadblock. It was a hurdle. He hit a stumbling block and he struggled to get over it, man. But we always talk about this. Progress over time isn't always linear. And it's what I always try and encourage people to remember. If you've hit a stumbling block in your own personal objectives, your own personal goals... That's what it is. It's a stumbling block, but it's not a reason to give up. You can always pick it up the next time out. Jan Tillman is the perfect embodiment of that. Last season, he stumbled on that upward trajectory. This year, he's ballooned over that hurdling block with eight goals in 17. It's, it's all about having that resilience, man. Pick yourself up. Progress over time, not always linear. You know, I haven't actually discussed this that much, though we did briefly touch on it in the last episode. After Jonathan Burkhardt just got another assist there for Jan Tillman. That is now, I think, 12 for the season. And as things stand, he's set to break Thomas Muller's record. The irony of trying so hard 
to get Maxime to break that record last season, only for him to fall a couple short of equaling it. And then for Burka, our top scorer to go and do it the following season, without even trying, would be unreal, man. As he's on the ball here and trying, he's like from range. Oh, great stop by Facundo Israel and turn behind for a corner. Is it Facundo or Fernando? Someone correct me. But it's Israel anyway to keep it at 1-0. Uh, this might be two headed away and still leading. Hanno Hanover not really causing us any problems here at all. Yes, we only have that one goal lead. And I often say this, oh, I never feel comfortable one goal lead. But really, this is one of those games where you kind of do. Even though we're only leading by one, it feels like three. You know, it's only natural to start to get a bit far ahead of yourself when you're on pace to do things. But we discussed this in the last episode, man. When you do that and you take your eye off the ball, that's when you become complacent and prone to slip up. So yeah, technically we're on pace for two different records this year. Jonathan Burkhart, most assists in a single season. And of course for the defensive record as well. Another clean sheet there, but we saw it in the last episode, man. When you do start to get too far ahead of yourself, you do become complacent. So keep your eye on the ball. It's a win. And yes, it's two more things done towards the records. But let's, let's just keep ourselves calm here. And directly after the game, Leverkusen putting in a bit of a silly man who's become a squad player here. He actually scored his first and only goal against Leverkusen last year in what turned out to be one of the most important goals of the season. But uh, no, I, I, I said, man, Ibrahim is silly man. I like him to score. But I've, I've always got one. I've always got one every single second. And, and you do as well. You might not realise it, but you do as well. You have a player like this who barely plays, but when he does play... He puts in a good shift. And ignore those statistics there. I, I often say this. The average rating never favours a defensive midfielder or a defensive player in general. But uh, you, you'll have players like this as well, man. Those players, they're, they're the unsung heroes of your team. And we need everyone available, including Justin as well, as Salzburg put in a bid, if we are... To possibly go for the treble. First time I've mentioned that word this season, treble. But everyone needs to be available for it. Oh, how's Benjamin getting on out on loan, by the way? Ooh... But he's not playing. This is this is where I get so annoyed with EA. He's not playing yet. He's grown. To, he's not playing a minute. He's not played a minute. Firstly, why he could easily get in that Hoffenheim side right now, eighty-one overall. And secondly, if that's the case, how's he growing two ratings? What's he done to warrant a plus two? I'm very tempted to recall him. You know, do you know what I actually might do? Justin's only got me two goals in thirteen games, and we said it. He needs to play to get the game time himself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to recall Benjamin from that loan at Hoffenheim. It's only going to cost us £4,000. And then, has he got showing great potential still? And then, I'm going to loan out Justin as well. So we'll, we'll do a little switchy-switchy here. We'll add Justin to the loan list and uh, try and get him out on loan. But Benjamin, 81 overall, grown two rays off and I'm, and getting recalled early. So that's a plus three rating for our bench there. Now, part of me thinks the reason why he hadn't been playing at Hoffenheim is because he's technically listed as... Uh, yeah, okay, guys. Uh, guys, we're on for a treble. Let's not worry about growing the club financially. I'll be doing that by winning you three major honours in a season, bruv. Um, sorry, as you see Leandro's coming back there. Great positive, because we know how important this guy is to us. Is, oh, get get out of here. Get out of here, man. Mind games. I mean, I'm putting him in for Vanderson ahead of our, uh, our Champions League clash against him. And adding Benteke in the swap deal. Probably trying to motivate Rodrigo. Um... Yeah, I was, was going to say, I think the reason why is Bayern want Justin, he's not going to play there. The reason why that player might not play out on loan is because you might say, well, Hoffenheim don't play with technical CFs, but Benjamin could easily play CAM, and, and Justin could have played CAM, do you know what I mean? Or striker, or for Justin LM. So it's not, to, to me, players sometimes do get played out of position, and so... Yeah, I think I think EA have got, in my opinion, EA have really got to look into fixing the loan system because, in my opinion, it's a little broken. Right, anyway, following game, uh, another newly promoted side, Hertha Berlin away at Olympia Stadion. Again, Bayern got the win, so they've cut it to four, but Leipzig slipped up. So, once again, our game in hand with the gap now cut to four points, taking on a side right now in the bottom two. Should be another banker, even though we're away at Olympia Stadion. Let's get the win. Come on, Carl. So, there's a few things that I would do to make the loan system uh, better. Firstly, um, I, I think you need to fix the whole delegating issue because not everyone knows about that workaround. You can't loan out a player unless you delegate the first offer no matter what, which, oh, Schwab just bailed me out there, is really annoying. I, I didn't know how to do that until you guys told me in the comments and for that I'm very grateful for. <laughs> it took me a lot longer to uh, to get that sorted than I, uh, I care to admit. Um, Second thing I would do um, is make sure that the clubs that are putting in the loan deals would actually want to play those players 
Bayern Munich have got Jamal Musiala and Harry Kane still there. I think Matthias Tell's moved on, but yeah, I don't think Justin's going to start there, if I'm being honest. Find, you know, one of the great strikers in Europe over the past decade. Oh, Johnny Burkhart, wonderful stuff there. And uh, one of the highest potential players in the game, if I'm being honest, you know. Uh, and thirdly, I would ask the uh, clubs to uh, to be able to put in a agreed squad playing time promise. So any club that puts a bid in would then say, we'll have this guy as our starting left back, or we'll have this guy as our backup goalkeeper, or we'll have this guy as our, you know, uh, regular striker, or our most important centre-half, you know, whatever. Key player, important player, rotation, like, like the way the football manager do it, basically. And, and fourthly, I would, I would also try and make it so the wage splits are a little bit more realistic, because you might notice every single delegation you start with, or every single negotiation is 60-40, which is just the same each time um fifthly am i really going to list all the things that are wrong if, if i do i'm going to be here for a long time so i've just given you four there that would improve it massively absolutely massively and make loaning a lot more beneficial but there's loads of other things that need working on with the uh, with the loan system anyway one did up here jonathan burkhart's third of the year and he might be going for that uh, assist title and assist record but he's still a goal scorer by trade and he's open to scoring here in berlin is he is he Easy. Oh, what a ball. What a ball. Oh, what a ball to finish. What a ball to finish. 24 to go and under absolutely no pressure into that words. Cracking more into the middle. Great finish with Schwal coming out and it's 1-1. Okay. All right. Now, I don't mind when we do drop points away against Borussia Dortmund. I don't mind when we drop points at home to RB Leipzig. I do mind when we drop points in these games here. You know, we, we have seen it. We have seen it consistently throughout the years. If you want to win the championship... You gotta win these sort of games. No exceptions. Come on. Come on, still time, but I haven't played very well in this one once again. And you know, granted. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Oh, that's a pen, that's a pen, that's a pen. All day of the week. Thank you very much, referee. Burkhart fouled from behind with running on for a one-on-one. -on -one. That was that was clearly gonna be a simple finish. That might be a Reggie and it is as well. Yeah, definitely no doubt about it. Pafé Sears takes him down as he's going for one-on-one. That's, that's a definite pen and a definite red there. Although I will say, was he outside the box when the... Oh, actually, I think he might have been just outside the box. I think it's a free kick. I think that's a free... I think he was just outside the box. And going all out here, Derek and Bissett coming off. And Best Day and Schaefer back from his loan spell looking for an instant impact here. But yeah, that's a free kick. It was just outside the box. But what a big moment this is for Jan Tillman. Two free kicks this season... This season, we haven't scored one in the entire save. We have a chance to restore the lead with 10 to go. And we might not get a better chance. It's Jan. Oh, it's gone over now. I've got my hand up. I'm appealing for a goal. Tillman! I don't care if you watch Buzzed or not. Because I've just blasted it past the keeper. Jan Tillman with a rocket. Continuing to add to his collection of gorgeous goals this year. And possibly the most important of the season. The bails us out in Berlin. What a goal. It looked like it across the line. Like initially, it, it genuinely looked as though it crossed the line. Um... I don't know how I'm possibly making that claim when the camera angle hadn't reset. So basically, Doxy Boy, what you're saying is you're completely biased because there is no way of knowing whether it would have crossed the line. Let's be honest. <laughs> oh, this is going to do it. But, oh, it's a terrible first touch, but he's got just about enough time. Can he set himself and finish? Oh, no, straight to the keeper. And it'll be claimed. It's not going to matter. Time's going to run out. And, oh, keeper, poor throw. And, oh, keeper gets back, but it's not going to matter. It's over. It is over. And we've done it. We've ground out the one goal victory for the third game in a row courtesy of a Thielman Thunderbolt from range oh goodness gracious I, I thought I thought the freaking crossed the line clearly it hadn't but the finish directly afterwards that is why you remain so focused so so focused when the play continues what a goal that was and this is why I think you know we need we need to keep the band together you know if we if we're gonna have a chance Hoffenheim you didn't right I, can I, is, is there a way to like, you know, block offers from a specific club? Because Hoffenheim, you're not playing. You didn't play Justin last year. You didn't play <laughs> Schaefer this year. Why would you play Justin this year now? 
Come on, you had you had your chance. Um, oh man, Barcelona, what are you, what's going on? Like EA, please fix the loan system, guys. It's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, all right, that's that's a li that's a little different. Celta Vigo. I, I don't I don't necessarily mind Celta Vigo. Would Benitez play him there in Galicia? Possibly. Um, just just want to see it. Are they are they playing with CFs? Because if they are. Then um, I'll probably let him go there. I got two two strikers and not a CF. Would he play? This is the thing. You you need to. Then again, I think I think I might actually be able to turn Justin into a striker actually. But it wouldn't be enough time until the window closes with there. Um, yeah, it takes him two weeks. But there would there would be enough time. So in which case, just gonna just gonna have to do it. Just gonna have to do it. Just gonna have to do it. I think I'll, I'll wait and see if another big comes in before deadline day. It's probably gonna be a trip to Galaxy for Justin. Right, following game, one of the biggest of the league season thus far. RB Leipzig in a meeting between first and third in West Germany. Right now, we are 10 clear of the season one champs. And heading into this game, I would say, because of the goal difference swing too, if they're to have any chance of staying within this title race, they simply can't afford to lose. A win would be massive. They don't need to win, but they can't afford to lose. Lose and they're 13 behind with a well worse goal difference with 15 games remaining. And I'm not sure they'll be able to make up that deficit, especially in the form we're in. Huge clash here, RB Leipzig. Come on, Carl. Great team, RB Leipzig got out there. You might have noticed pre-game, I highlighted Randall Colo Moani as well. I know he's had a bit of a mixed season for PSG, and that, that's being quite kind to him. Um, but I, I have to say, I, I really think Colo Moani next year is going to have a phenomenal season. You know, Mbappe has now announced on his socials that he's definitely leaving PSG. And I know I know we've seen this story before, but this time, this time it's real. Oh, Ansgar. Johnny... Yes, what a goal. But uh, now it's real and Mbappe is definitely going in the summer now. It's, it's all but confirmed. And I think I think for next year, with Randall being trusted as the main guy to replace Killian, watch this space. I think he's going to have a phenomenal, phenomenal year at the part of the France next season. And I'll be pleased to see it as well because he's never really shaken off that one miss against Argentina in the World Cup final. When we say miss, it was really just an incredible save from Emmy Martinez. But he's never quite shaken that off uh, from that World Cup final moment there. But I think next year he's going to let us do a football, do the talking. It'll be a second full year at PSG. And I, I, I think he's going to have a great year at the, uh, at the part of the France in Mbappe's absence. And with 18 and a half minutes to go, we are looking set for our seventh win in a row in the league. Which... Oh, boy, just leveled there against sign track Frankfurt. And I took my eye off the ball there as Martel is dispossessed and Danny Olmo fires home. And that right there is my fault completely. What did we talk about in the episode opener? Don't take your eye off the ball and focus on the task at hand. Doxy boy with his right eye looking at the top right there. Seeing, oh, what's the goal between Bayern and Frankfurt? Marcus Rashford. What happens on the pitch? Quick interception and Danny Olmo Fire zone from close range, and I'm probably going to drop two points. Learn those lessons. Focus on the task at hand, and don't worry about what anyone else is doing. Only focus on what you're doing. Silly. Silly, silly, silly. And this is two points drop for sure. Yep, that is disappointing. Much to ponder post-game. Two points slipping through our fingers and a chance to go 13 clear of Leipzig. Fumbled. I dropped the bag. I dropped the points. And took my eye off the ball. Took my eye off the points. Disappoint. I, I only, only myself to blame for that one, though. Only myself to blame. Although, thankfully, Bayern drew with Frankfurt. So the gap at the top does remain the same. Yes, it's a missed opportunity, but it could have been a lot, lot worse. In the grand scheme of things, a 1-1 one -one draw against RB Leipzig is not a bad result. So, yeah, Celta Vigo won to Justin on a short-term loan. So, yeah. Now, I mentioned this before. Um, if you do want to loan your players out and you're struggling to, to get them to go through... You've got to follow a formula. So I thank my subscribers for letting me know how to do this in the chat and in the comments. But you've got to delegate the first offer, even if, like we want to do, still have it as a short-term loan. Even if you still want to agree on the same loan length as the initial bid, you still...
still have to delegate the first offer. It's really silly, I know. It's a really common bug that needs to be fixed. But you've still got to delegate the first offer and then you can negotiate the wage split directly afterwards. So deadline day is here. Wow, look at that. Rodri going to Turin for 88.5 mil straight off the bat. How about that? Um, yeah, 7 mil in the budget. We're, we're skipping right through. We're going to try and loan out Justin, get him that first team footballers. Thank you, Liverpool, for weakening me that side ahead of that uh, tie there. But yeah, I, I would have loaned Justin out. That's all we're doing. I mean, there, there isn't really like a squad player that I can bring in here that will make any kind of difference either. Can't afford this geezer. Uh, Ua Drago has now gone to Sociedad, so obviously missing out on him. Do you know what I could have done? I could have sold Hussein Basic and Jatta and gone for Ua Drago. Missed opportunity there for a Mr. Doxy boy. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no one I could bring in that could um, that could make a difference right now. Uh, that I can afford. So would that be in the case? Yeah, we, we, we're getting straight through deadline day. Leave the money, let it carry over till next season. We continue to be given small budgets by the board, but hopefully with the 7 mil we'll have carrying over to next year, plus whatever we'll have for next season. Uh, Zabit comes in for best day for Nottingham Forest, but sorry, Nuno, absolutely not. This guy's going, no, we love this guy. We love this guy. Hopefully next year for the first time, uh, fingers crossed, touch wood, we'll, uh, we'll be able to break the 100 mil barrier for the first time in the save. And there we go. Justin out on a short-term loan deal to Celta Vigo. As he'll link up in Galaxy with his new teammates. And hopefully this time he'll get the game time. Because when he got the game time at Mainz back in Season 2, he was brilliant. Teams have just got to play him, man. Oh, and I actually missed this on the latest rumours screen. But there was a massive bid for Vanderson, 86.8 mil. And do you remember at the start of the season, we were like, yeah, we'll send him to Real Madrid, you know, to become the next Galactico there. That's realistic. And the bid they put in was laughably low. Yeah, guys, you, you had your chance and you failed. But right now in January, he's off limits to anyone. I don't care. Real could come in at a bid right now after reluctantly, well, just not doing it in the summer. But I'd still say no. My stars are off limits until the summer. If they want to go then, I'll consider it. There's no one we could re really sign to replace him. But right now, no, no, one, no one is going with four hours on deadline day. Absolutely not. We're keeping the band together. And so as deadline day comes to an end, and again, just a one bit of business for us on the day, which was loaning out Justin to Celta Vigo. Uh, we see the top deal. We saw there earlier, Rodri to Juventus for 88.5 mil. And yeah, Real Madrid didn't get uh, Vanderson, but got Lissandro Martinez for 68.5 mil. And uh, how about that? Our uh, West German rivals, Munch and Gladbach, strengthening by bringing in Zakarian, who we use in the Sociedad. Uh, stint in our Luton Town crew and it was quite good for us as well so interesting big money signing there from our rides but that will do it very quiet deadline day for us outside of loading out Justin because again I think if we are to have any chance of winning a treble we've got to keep the band together the squad the squad's good this, the squad is really, really good. The first 11 is fantastic. We've seen we've had a couple of noteworthy injuries for Leandro and Maxime as well. I'm predicting at least one in the next two months as well, which is going to be massive. It could come to anyone. Some, someone's at risk. I can just feel it coming. And probably Eric Martel, based on how the save's gone, but I guess we'll see. But the squad's good. I think the depth is okay, but it is still not quite as strong as other teams. We need to make sure it doesn't become any weaker. We've done that by only loaning out Justin, but bringing it back Benjamin. To uh, cover the gap. One thing I do hope EA improve on, by the way, I'm giving all my career my wish list tips out today. One thing I want them to do is to add in the transfer history um, a specific look at one club's transfers because I want to see what Milan have done. I, I want to see what Milan have done. I want to go to Milan's team and look at their full list of transfers, incomings and outgoings. You can do all clubs, obviously, but there's just too many deals that go through to go through them all. And obviously, they won't cover any, all of them anyway because they'll run out, of, um, run out of room on the actual... Um, on the actual screen. But uh, that, that, that's a mystery for me, eh? Why can't you just choose one club and see what those clubs have done in terms of transfers? And it's time to prove that as well because following game, DFB Pokal quarterfinal against our West German rivals, Borussia Mönchengladbach at the Rhine Energy Stadion. Aims to reach the semis for the third straight year and still looking to reclaim the trophy you lost last season after winning it the year before. Mönchengladbach with a few rotations tonight on Wednesday night, Tuesday night, sorry. Let's get the job done and make the final four. Come on, Carl. Yeah, we mention this quite often, but sometimes winning multiple honours is going to come down to who's got the most amount of quality in depth. You know, who, who's, got, who's got the boys off the bench that can come on and, and fill a gap. That's onside there. Because at the end of the day, 
Sometimes, oh, great save when you had to win. Sometimes you start as, great turn, Ansgar. Great cross, and headed away by Pacho. Sometimes you start as, we need a breather, like tonight. So we've got Benjamin, we've got David, we've got Ari and B, we've got Suleimana out there. Coming in for a cup quarterfinal, because the starters need a breather. And in cup football, as we know, there's no second chances, so. Oh, best of space. Go all the way, go all the way, go all the way. With that left foot. Yes, there we go. It often comes down to who's got enough quality in the reserves on the bench. And when you've got someone like an 83 rated Jan Nicholas Best Day waiting to step in, you know you've got a chance. FC Khan take the lead right before the break, and deservedly so tonight. And as we're coming towards the end of the game, that is going to do it. Oh, and it, you know what? We talk about this all the time. How many little. Wish list items have I ticked off today for things I'd love to see. Get some handbags out. Come on, I want to see a little scrap right now. Seriously, 15 plus DLC EA, because that is a naughty chance from Wilfred Dede. That's what you will, you know, you know what that is? That's pure frustration. That's game over. That's knockout confirmed. That's arrival away as your laser coming out. Tempers have boiled over, and you've dived in late. Get the handbags out. Let's, let's have a little scrap. A little scrap. Just for the immersion, just for the realism. Not condoning the behaviour, but uh, that just adds to the realism there. You know, it just you could, you could see it. You, you, you could tell the tension was boiling over. Uh, 15 plus DLC. Out of all the things I, uh, I have on my wish list, I think that's one thing that I'll probably never get fulfilled. <laughs> hey, you never know, right? Anyway, uh, DFB Pokal Semi draws us against in the final four. Her to Berlin. Her to Berlin in the semi, so they would have just knocked out Hoffenheim, and Frankfurt took out the only second tier side remaining Schalke. But Her to down the bottom of the table. We just beat them in what was, to be fair, a very close one in Olympia Stadion. But this, a one legged affair, is at home. Right, following game, back to matters in the Bundesliga, taking on one of our new arrivals in the save. Werder Bremen at the Weser Stadion, as we aim to pull further clear at the top of the table as we continue to hunt for this magic treble. Let's get the job done here. Come on, girl. So we've got Leandro back in the match day score for this game as well. Not starting. Oscar and Martel continuing to start together. But uh, the Luxembourg lad back from his three month layoff. That's a big boost. Well, I didn't know exactly when he was coming back. So to know he'll be back on time for the. Oh! First leg of that Champions League last 16 away at the San Siro. That's a big boost there. Because our, uh, our Luxembourg star had been fantastic prior to that injury. In the match day squad on the bench today. So I need to regain his sharpness gradually. Well, I must say, this is just another game where I've not exactly been at my best. And Yes, DJ, what in, mate? I often talk about this. Like, every, everyone's going to have FC sessions like this. Like, everyone's going to have... Oh, my goodness. You know, days, evenings, afternoons, whatever, where you're just not playing good. And this is just this is one of those times right now. I, I am straight up not playing my best. And... I've been bailed out a couple of times today. I don't think it's going to happen here. As we're set for uh, two points dropped. And it might even end up being all three. Kovnaki fires over from close range. Werder Bremen in front. We've got a great rivalry with these guys, man. Our, our fixtures against them are always so unpredictable. We might go into the games as favourites every time, but we've got such a mixed record, honestly. 26 to go, and our new rivals once again are looking to inflict a big blow on us. Oh, I just couldn't get it away. I think that's the, that's the thing. We've, we've just been a step slow today. Do you know what I mean? We've just been a step slow in this game. Ball. And score. Eep. Go on, Vanderson. Oh, what a turn. Oh, what a save. What a save. Sprawling out like Manuel Neuer would. He'd be proud of that one. <laughs> the predecessor. 14 to go, and I think he's just held on to the points for Werner. Thankfully, I have just seen that Freiburg have leveled away at the Red Bull Arena, so that'll be two points dropped there for Leipzig. But then they will still cut it on us by one. It could be a lot worse, so. Uh, yes, Johnny. Ah, oh, no one's there. Okay, this is it. Last chance. As Eric Martel receives, and out wide is Vanderson. Oh, ball. Burkhardt. 
Come on! <sighs> Mr. Jonathan Burkhart, I owe you an apology. I wasn't familiar with your game. This season, I've said he hasn't been great in front of goal, but he's been setting him up left, right and centre. But in this run, he's got me three and four, and this one of the biggest. Played through after a nice little mini move, and at number nine, well, he's not even going to come close to winning a golden boot this year. But it will certainly win us our first share of points through clutch moments. That is massive. Cole bailed out, not for the first time today. Right, let's do two more. I would have gap at the top being cut to two after two draws in three. This is a massive one to try and bounce back with here. Returning back home to take on Union Berlin, who last season were brilliant, but this year have had a much tougher season. Our game in hand this one need to return to winning ways if we are to keep Bayern Munich as far away as possible. Union Berlin and our penultimate game today. Come on, Carl. Well, we occasionally talk about how if you want to be better than the best... You can't afford to make any more mistakes than they do. And the best don't make many mistakes. And so, that's offside, that's offside. Dan Neil, you can celebrate, but it's definitely offside. You know, in, in this run here, we've had two draws in three. But Bayern have had one slip up, yes. But other than that, they've, they've won them all. You know, so if we, if we want to be, yeah, he's well offside. If we, if we want to be as good as them this year, if we want to keep them at bay, we can't afford any more slip ups. And so, this is a crucial game here. We talk often about how, you know, one win isn't one win, one loss isn't one loss. Psychologically, they all have different feels to them. After two draws in three, we cannot afford yet another slip up and only one win in four. That is not title winning form. Get find some winning, mate. And yep, Leandro, nicely done. Still deadlocked here. Under half an hour to go. Ansgar finds space, runs into it. Turns. Finds Tillman! Super Jan Tillman with another. And in this run, he has been bailing me out, man. That Hertha Berlin game winner. And this might end up being the game winner as well against Union Berlin. Ansgar finds him. 18 yards from goal. Takes aim. And what's that saying? If you've done it before, you can do it again. Did it at Olympia Stadion from that range. So he's got previous doing this. Just outside the area. Taking aim. Hitting the back of the net. 10 in 21 for Tillman. And that might be the goal. It gives us a priceless three points here. It will indeed be the winning goal. And once again, it's our vice captain to the rescue. Four points picked up in this run of five games have been courtesy of our number 29, Jan Tillman, having perhaps his best season in the save thus far. 10 goals in 21 and two game winners in this mini stretch alone. You cannot understate the importance of this guy. Right, final game today, FSV Mites away as we take on the newly promoted side, looking for what would be our third win in four as we aim to keep the chasing pack at bay, heading into our following game in the week, the first leg of that Champions League last 16 of the San Siro. Don't want to go to Milan on the back of a poor performance. What a big win here before our flight over to Italy. Let's get the job done. Come on, come on. Yes, travel well, travel well. You know, you need to make sure that if you are going away uh, in, in the week for a big, big game in Europe, travel well. And by that, I mean, go into it feeling good about yourself. You know, go into it on the back of a win. Go into it on the back of a big win, if possible. Johnny Burkhart, first time he comes back to the MEW arena. What does he do? Gets a goal right from kickoff in what is his best goal-scoring run of the season. Yeah, he had one eye on that assist record. He's certainly still got the eye on the assist title. But he said no matter how we get the goals, no matter how we get the wins, as long as you do, that's all that matters to me. Team over individual awards. Five minutes in, already a goal up. Let's get our first big win in a long time. Pass cam to Ansgar. And there is Burkhardt. And I see Tillman ahead of him. Can he slide him through? Yes, he can. Great first touch. Not a bad second. Back to Burkhardt. Back to Ansgar. Shot blocked. It will drop to Alfonso. Off the post. And cleared by Raul Torrente. Martel flicks it over his head. And fans have got any overlap. Keep going. So I'm not going to pass it to you, but you'll be my dummy runner. Johnny Burkhardt. Alfonso. Oh, great save by Zentner. And 
35. So we're, we're, we're pretty much in control right now, to be fair. It's all FC Carlton, and, and that second goal is coming. I often say it's when you've got a team on the ropes, don't let them out. You know, just keep on going, because eventually, eventually, you'll deliver possibly the haymaker, as Eric Martel might have delivered the KO in round four, because it's the 40th minute. Does that make sense? Not really. Martel with the head of night, it's 2 0. At first, it's, it's a round three. It's a round three. It's halfway through round three, and that might be the KO blow already. That's a great tackle by the second. Can we get one last chance here for. Oh, nice build up. For a third. Schaefer, the kid! Welcome back, Benjamin. Yeah, I don't think you're ever going to become like MJ now, but. He can still play a role in this team. The icing on the cake as Benjamin gets his first goal since returning from loan. 3 0 at Mainz and a big statement made. AC Milan, we're coming for you at the San Siro. A much tougher opponent, we know that, but this is exactly what we needed. What a win. And I'll do it for today's episode of the Bundesliga Krima, guys. So big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed today's episode. And if you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you. Have a fantastic day. And we'll return in the next one with the one you don't want to miss, man. We'll have more big games in the Bundesliga as you now take an eight-point gap at the top of the table. Thank you very much, Borussia Dortmund, as we own cement our position in pole position. And of course, we'll have both legs of our Champions League last 16 at home and away at the San Siro first against the side that finished runners-up last year and knocked us out too in the last 16. It's time for revenge. Round two, baby. Bring it on. Have a fantastic day, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the next episode, possibly the biggest of the save thus far, very soon.